<laughs> it's like Doctor Strange said. We're in the end game now. <laughs> and yes, we're in the end game for My Hero Academia because right now, this is the start. This is only the start. Only the start. Are you. S- <laughs> oh, yeah. This. What you guys saw to, um, in today's episode of My Hero Academia. This is just the start of the end game of where this will change. And when I mean change, it's going to flip. No more holding your hands stuff again. Season four, yes, the start of it, you can say, no, they don't hold your hands. They go straight into this. But I'm being legit. This is when they just go balls to the wall and they're like, whatever, we're not messing around no more. We're not, we're not playing fun and games. We're going to have serious elements, and we're going to get to these things. So, yeah, I was happy. Um, I'll give my thoughts on the Nomu versus Endeavor thing at the end because, one, I am guess I'm kind of shocked that they're doing this fight pretty early. I thought they would save this fight for Season 5. But then again, it makes sense to end the, end the season on this fight. So anyways, this is our, well, first things first. Hi, I'm Cam from 15. And there's the Red Wolf here. And we're here for another My Hero Academia review. And this is My Hero Academia, episode 24, the second to last episode. Um, and it's con- it's already been confirmed, like, this week, that there are only two more episodes left in My Hero Academia. As of this video, there's only one more episode left of season four. Um, but this is the second to last episode, and season four is wrapping up, and what a ride. So, and we're going to have one more episode to end off this amazing season. Um, sorry for that. Stupid text messages. Um, but anyways, this episode is t- titled Japanese Hero Billboard Chart. Essentially, this episode talks about the Hero Billboard Chart, and focuses really on Hawks and Endeavor. Um, no Deku, no Deku. He's just there. But anyways, um, the episode starts off, and we find out that right now, well, what's currently going on, this episode's taking place near the end of November. So my birthday month, wonderful. Um, I wonder if my birthday is going on right now in that universe. Um, so all of a sudden, it cuts to Airy. So we ended off last week's episode with Airy, and we start off technically this week with Airy, and she's getting her hair done by Nezure and having pigtails and stuff like that and looking all cute and stuff. Just adorable. Protect Aerie at all cost. What? Sorry, I'm internal screaming. <laughs> um, so we get, thanks to um, Eraserhead, um, Aerie will now stay at UA so she can learn to master her quirk, essentially, and because the teachers want to help her. But also, they didn't want her to be put in an orphanage because her little horn on her forehead is starting to grow back. So, I'm guess. Oh, thanks. Hello, princess. Hey, princess. Nope. <laughs> Goodbye, Princess. Um, anyway, sorry for that interruption, but um, I'm guessing the re- I'm guessing another reason why they saw it see fit because well, they also say like she technically is an orphan now, and her grandfather is still in that coma. So the hospital did not fix the fact that the coma, and it's looking like that dude might be in the coma for the rest of his life. So overall, messed that up for that dude. Um. And like I was saying, um, because her horn's growing back, their eraser head was essentially like, I don't know if we can risk the fact of putting her in an orphanage and giving her to a family when, say, if her quirk goes off again and she starts erasing people, she'll be in the same predicament she was. Um, so um, this, so they plan on taking her in. Um, and Tamaki actually makes a good point. He's like, well, maybe when this is all sorted out and she's good to go, maybe she can give you your powers back. And Tamaki's like, yeah, or not Tamaki, um, Mirio's like, oh yeah, hopefully that's the case. But 
they're still leaving that, you know, window wide open for a what if possibility, which I think he will get his powers down the road. I could I feel like he could get his powers in the final arc of My Hero Academia again. We'll have to see how that progresses. That means they would have to have like some kind of year time skip or a few year time skip, which I think they're already debating on doing. Um especially current especially after the current arc going on in the manga. So, um it cuts to Class 1A just in their dorms at night. And Tokuyami talks a little bit about his internship with Hawks. But he kind of gives a little thing saying that his internship went by too fast because, you know, something like that. And it's funny because Hawks later mentions how people say he goes too fast. Um, then all of a sudden we get a surprise from the Wild Wild Pussycats. And it's been a long time since we've seen them in terms of, well, episodes. But if we're talking about seasons, it's been a short while. And because we saw them at the first half of season three, um, the start of the crazy all for one arc. Um, essentially, they show up at Class 1A's dorm. They said they'll eventually see Class 1B later. But essentially, they go in and just say their hellos and stuff like that. Can I just make for a mention of the fact that the leader, Shino, is Bay material? Yep. I won't deny that. Um, so, um, Deku finally gets to see Kota again. Um, and funny thing with Kota is, he was so inspired by Deku saving him, he got the same exact shoes as him. Look at that. Hello, hello. Oh, my God. You know, when you come to think about it, Deku has saved, like, two kids in the last two seasons that have going to probably have be inspired by him. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was pretty nice um, that he was wearing the same thing, even though Kota was like, shut up, I am not doing that, and stuff <laughs> like that. But, um, yeah, um, I thought that was a nice little cute little scene. Um, it shows that Kota has actually changed, and he looks like he loves heroes a lot more. All thanks to Mr. Teacher Number One Hero, whenever that is. Um, I'm so- Doki Doria! <laughs> Sorry, I said that. Anyways, um, the Wild Wild Pussycats talk about how they're going to get into the hero business again because I guess from what they were saying, they went on a little hiatus because of the incident from last season. And essentially, Deku also asked Ragdoll, which is the green-haired girl, um, if she got her powers back. And she says no. Um, And essentially, um, she will be like, essentially the office worker for the Wild Wild Pussycats, like the -the behind-the-scenes people. You kind of back them up from, you know, like how in Batman, you, he has Alfred backing them up. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Then it cuts to All for One talking about it, because Shino starts talking about it. Um, why they can't really get the corp, because All for One's... Essentially, he's talking why he likes to take corps. Essentially, he's saying with his smart little smile of his, with his no face, no eye self, saying that, um, essentially... I just can't help myself. And when I see a good quirk, I just have to take it. He's like, no, I could give the quirk back, but you have to let me go. And I don't think they want to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, again, this goes to show how devious and how much of a prick all for one is. Um, I guess your thoughts on that, Denzel? Oh, my God. I'm still worried, dude. I'm st- what, what if he finds a way to break out? I don't care what anybody says. Anybody, whether you're an anime only or a manga only, you have that sneaky feeling in the back of your head. He's going to get out of Tartarus. He's going to get out of Tartarus. Somehow, some way, he's going to get out. Mm-hmm. And whenever that happens, <laughs> no All Might can save you now. <sighs> Midoriya, you're up next. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, so they talk about his stupid thing, and I'm like, all for one is just being an a-hole right now. He know they know he knows that they want to get Ragdoll's powers back, but he knows they have to let him release so he's able to give it back. But you know he ain't gonna give it back. He'll just destroy the entire prison, and then you'll be right back to where you started back a season ago. 
maybe if not worse. So um, the hero billboard chart, and they start talking about the hero billboard chart, and essentially, it's where the total number of incidents resolved, um, how a hero contributes to society, and a citizen approval rating um, is based on how they rank, and they do it two times a year. So it it's an interesting little tidbit that they have to do to, um, you know, make sure that, oh, there's these rankings. We're going to see who's number one to whoever is the last person. Um, so, yeah, on the Wild Wild Pussycats, they mentioned, well, Kirishima mentions, like, they were ranked 32. But before this whole entire discussion even got started, they talk about, the Wild Wild Pussycats bring up the fact that they draw that they were now currently ranked 411. So it goes to show they dropped a lot. But then they but then they talk about, well, yeah, just because we dropped a lot doesn't mean anything. And just look at it. And she, you know, I think it was I think it was the blonde haired one. She says she essentially brings up the fact that um like yeah, we dropped, but look at what we did in the time where we we did little hero work. Our little to no hero work. We were still like, I guess, in the top five hundred. You can say, if not, we were only eleven off of being straight up at four hundred. So it goes to show, you know, things can get crazy. Now we go to now it cuts after the halfway. I will, I guess, Denzel, your thoughts on the wild wild pussy cats coming back? Mm, that would be interesting, even though I. They probably won't be as strong as they used to be because of one uh, because of one member that doesn't have her quirk anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I guess yeah, it'd be a it'd be a breath of fresh air to see them again in action. So this time, yeah. Uh, I guess what are your thoughts on the hero billboard chart? Hmm. So. Hmm. So, so that's how they're ranked, huh? Yep, essentially. And then they do it two times a year. So you could be like number five. And if you don't do a good job with what I just mentioned, you could drop all the way down to probably 30. Which is insane. So you got to keep that reputation up and doing your job, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, so after, I believe that's when we get to the title screen. And um, it cuts to the first, you know, it cuts to this arena where they're holding the first billboard chart since events from the first half of season three dealing with All for One. Um, And they talk about how All Might retired three months ago and stuff like that. So it's looking like... what It's looking like they probably do these rankings one time at the end of the year, like the November-December area. They must do another ranking maybe sometime before, I guess, the summer starts. I don't know when the other ranking is, but who knows when. Um, but your boy did a good job, and I managed to put down all the rankings. So we're going to go from behind to first place. Where are they start? So number 10 hero in Japan is Dragon Hero Ryuku from the overall Hark, if you remember. Um, now she says, I don't know if I'm ready for this. I'm like, I'm grateful for this but i don't think i was grateful now she says all that because she feels guilty for what happened to night eye that's why if you had any questions if you're an anime only and you're wondering why is she saying like she would not want to be number 10 hero at least on the top 10 it's because she blames she somewhat blames herself for the incidents of the overhaul or when it comes to night eye the next the number nine hero is yori mushi um, he looks like a, I guess, Japanese shogun type of samurai type of guy. Um, it's an interesting design, I'll say that much. Um, and a quick little tidbit they mention is, or he says, is he used to be in the top, t- or not the top ten, the top three. So this guy used to be a t- top three world or a top three hero. And, but that, but it, when I mean top three hero, not like from like past seasons. Well, who knows when he was a top three hero. He could have been a top three hero in season three. Um, not season three, in season one. But it, I, I'm guessing what they're saying is like his younger days. Because he looks kind of old. Mm-hmm. Um, number eight. A washing machine. I'm not even kidding. A washing machine. His hero's name is called Wash. 
Wash. Okay, nothing else to say here. Nothing else to say here. There's nothing else. He just says, wash, wash, wash. Move on. Number seven. Um, number seven hero in Japan is Kamuni War Woods. Um, if you don't remember who that is, obviously you saw the episode, but he essentially was the one hero from season one who did the branch things and stuff like that who can turn in stuff into trees and they make and another little quick tidbit they mention is because they cut over to mount lady and they kind of give her an interview saying like oh you team you teamed up with him and another person mentioned um so are you t i heard apparently you are dating are you two are dating comment. so um yeah and she was like uh, no comment and then she's like why does he have to be ranked so high we later get revealed Mount Lady currently is ranked number 32. So uh, Kamuni Woods, um, I guess he's hitting it because he's got Mount Lady. Um, oh so I guess if you had any questions if can heroes date each other, heroes can date each other. Um, uh, yeah. Makes me... Make, I guess what are your thoughts on this pairing? Huh? Hmm. I can grow to like it, even though I, I barely see much of them. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, they kind of met. They the crazy thing, and back in like the first episode of season one, um, they I guess you could say they kind of hinted that they had something for each other because she kind of stole his little stop the veil bad guy thing at the start of season one in the first episode, and I was like, oh, what a crazy way to tie things up now. They're apparently dating. Apparently. Um, she's probably keeping it strictly professional right now. But I think, I think from what I remember, it's confirmed that they are dating. Makes me feel better about the Deku and Uraraka ship. <laughs> if heroes can date. Yeah. Now, I don't know how... Gee, I, I don't know how, like, in a... In in the relationship, because they do say that they they're a team, they're like a team, they teamed up together, they work together. I don't know how they can keep Lee strict that professional without her being like all over him and stuff like that. Who knows? Who knows? Um, now number six, um, we get the hero Crust. Um, um I won't say much about Crust. Um, I will say he was in the. A couple of manga chapters, you know, in the past a few manga chapters, um, you won't get his powers revealed till that point in time. So I won't say anything else. He's kind of just crying from the fact that, um, like, why did all might have to go? I should have been at the incident. And he's like wishing he had done something to help I might all might stay. So it looks like he's an all might fan. And then here we go to the top five. Top five, um, I guarantee you a lot of manga readers were ready for to see this character animated. And you anime only fans might have a new favorite waifu, best girl, and that is the bunny hero Mira Carl. Um I'm not gonna say anything, but I've seen what people have said about her, and people love her body. Um I'm not just gonna say anything, hey. If she's your new Lola Bunny, that's your cup of tea. I'm not into furry. Well, some furries, but if you're into furry characters, that's you. That's you. I guess, Denzel, what are your opinions on this new chick? Haha, <laughs> she's a furry. <laughs> okay. Number four, we get Edgeshot. Um, if you don't remember Edgeshot, I think he was in a part of season three when All Might breaks into the League of Villains little bar and the Nomus come out of nowhere. Um, yeah, he's kind of like, he's kind of just being humble, but he's like, thank you for voting me. I'll do the best I can. I was like, okay, okay, he's being humble. Here we get to number three. Number three, Shocker, best genus. Um, now reading this in the monitor the first time, I was like, oh, best genus is still alive. I thought he died back in season three. Um, no, he's been on a hiatus, and he's the number three hero. Mm -hmm. Thoughts? Yay, another breath of fresh air. I haven't seen him in a, in a little while, in a hot minute, so. 
Yeah, we almost haven't seen him as a lion. We haven't seen him in a while while Pussycats. Um, number two, the number two hero. Um, if you have not seen Heroes Rising, this is your first time seeing him in full animation. The number two hero, Hawks. I guess, Denzel, your thoughts on his design. He's a bird, pretty much, technically. And uh, his personality is quite a... Uh, how should I put this? He's, he's got quite an ego. Um, and then, obviously, number one hero is Endeavor, sporting a new costume or new armor. And I guess your thoughts on his new armor. Um, I guess it looks cool. <laughs> it looks cool. I mean, I, 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 in my opinion, I can hardly see any difference right now. <laughs> yeah, it's really the shoulder plates, but yeah, he still looks cool. I think his gauntlets will look a little bit different too. Um, but I like his new, I like his new design. I like his new design. It's nice and improved. Um. So, anyways, while they're ta- while the moderators like talking and giving like these the top ten heroes these interviews on like what they feel like they're gonna do to society to help out, and they're kind of saying like, yeah, I'm gonna try to be the best hero I can be to impress all of you guys. And Hawks he goes over and he's like, Yo, Endeavor, what do you think about being the number one hero? Endeavor's like, the hell is this dude talking about? And essentially, when it comes up to Hawk's time, and he essentially, he kind of gives a monologue saying, like, look, I ain't doing this for no fame. I'm not doing this for no popularity. I'm just doing this to protect the peace of the people here and stuff like that. And he kind of, you know, is being, I guess, like Denzel said, a little bit egotistical because he kind of brings up the fact that if we're being really honest about these rankings, Endeavor would be number four. uh, Best Genius would be number one, even through the hiatus. I'd still be number two. And... I forgot, I think he said Ed Shot would be, like, number three. And he was kind of being, like, I guess, like Denzel said, egotistical about it and stuff like that. Now, we get some little clarification on Hawks, and this is very interesting. So, currently, number two, this guy is age 22. Number two hero, and he's age 22. And he was in the top three. And he's in the top three doing this. He started his agency at 18 years of age. That's essentially me and Denzel going out of high school. Mm-hmm. By the second half of that year, he was in the top 10. So a bird, a bird guy is ranked that high. Tokyo, I'm just a bird guy. Don't hate on birds, my dude. I'm not. I'm not hating. I'm just. I'm just wondering what. 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 What did. What did he do? That. That. That made him get ranked so high. <laughs> well, it's like the rank. It's like the ranking says. He probably solved a lot of incidents. Um, he contributed to society really nicely, and his approval rating probably was probably fairly nice, and a lot of people probably liked him. So it's impressive that this guy, that this guy at a young enough age, at 18, was already in the top 10. They don't mention where he was at in the top 10, but they mention the fact that he was in the top 10. So they go to Endeavor to interview him at the thing, and he's like, just watch me. That's it. And then I think Hawks was just clapping. He was like, good job, good job. Um they have a little talk in the back, and eventually, and essentially, Hawks wants to team up with Endeavor because there are reports in the city about No Moo. Mm-hmm. They're back, baby. Yes, and then all of a sudden, it cuts to Dobby walking into a shed with this No Moo looking like he's eating something, and this ain't No Moo you've seen in the past three seasons completely different and what I mean completely different you see his eyes his eyes are all slanted and it's like (sighs) 
anyways, it cuts to the key. This is where you hit the halfway point. It cuts to the Kyushu district in Hawks City. And it talks about this. This dude comes up and he's just looking at this building, talking about how he's working at this building. And then he's like talking about how he talks about this book called The Metal Liberation Warfront. And I think Destro. Two things, anime only people. Keep those two things I just said in your head because that will clearly be something down the road they'll bring back up. So, Meta Liberation Warfront and Destro. Hmm. Remember those. Remember those. We find out his name is Turu Hazkashi. He's he's a 31-year-old. His quirk is shame. And essentially, the more he is embarrassed, the stronger he gets. Okay, pretty interesting quirk. All right, that's, that's fair. That's fair. All of a sudden, Hawks shows us shows up, stops his, stabs this guy with his wings in his back, and essentially brings him in. So this next little scene is him walking with Endeavor in the city, and... He, there's these issues going on. This guy's just saving and helping people only with his wings. Only, only with his wings. Only with his wings. And, like, he picks up one girl's suitcase with his wings to help go up the, this old lady, have her suitcase up the stairs. Um, he saves this dog almost getting hit by a car with his wings or his feathers. It's, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. So you can see, like, oh, this is how he got to be in the top three, in the top ten that early on. Denzel? Okay. I can I can see where he got his his title and why he has a little bit of an ego now, because he's quite popular. Um, also, it goes into where he is, like, where people... This crowd of people start going around him saying, Hogs, Hogs, like, give me your autograph. Um, can you take a picture selfie with me? Like, this one girl takes a whole selfie with him, and he's like, <laughs> he's just a chill guy. He's just a chill guy. He looks like he's a chill guy just having fun. Um, and he even brings up the fact, he's like, look, I just want to chillax all day. I don't want to do nothing. I just want to say, I just want to stop petty criminals and go home and sleep. Um, that's when he was talking to Endeavor in the little dining room, though. But, yeah, he's taking selfies, he's writing autographs, you know, stuff like that, shaking people's hands. And this is what I thought was really funny. So these three kids are talking about, like, oh, look, it's Endeavor. He's like, and they're like, go on, go on, go talk to him. And this one dude's like, no, I don't know if I want to talk to him. You know, he, I, I, he might scream at me. And Endeavor comes up on him, and he's like, it's okay. He puts his hand out, and the kid's like, what the hell? This is not the Endeavor I know. You change and I don't like it. And he just runs off and stuff like that. And I'm like, and then Endeavor is like giving the face Denzel is given. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know why. Okay, first things first. I don't know what's up with that kid who I guess was a parent fan of Endeavor. Um, would you not want to shake your favorite hero's hand? I don't know what I'm getting at this. I don't know. That's odd. I'm like, he just runs off. I'm like, because he wants Endeavor to be like, the, I guess, the old Endeavor, where he just didn't give a butt about anything. I was like, see, if that was me, I'd been like, F you. <laughs> um, Hawks was in the background laughing about that. He was like, ha, 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 ha. Don't, he's like, it seems like you're different. And it's funny because Endeavor's like, it seems like not all kids are like that one kid from Shuketsa High. Um, so um, it cuts to um, um, Endeavor and Hawks eating in this nice little restaurant area. And they're just talking and stuff like that. And Hawks brings up the point where he's like, you know what, Endeavor? I actually wanted to intern your son, Todoroki. But because he failed his hero license exam, I couldn't take him in. So that's why he took Tokoyami. Um, so it's interesting that he wanted, he was interested in Todoroki. Um, he does mention, he's like, it would be interesting if I took the under the wing the number two hero's son. Um, so I see. Under the wing. I see. <laughs> yes. Pun in, perfectly intended. 
Um, and essentially, Endeavor, he's not having any. He's like, Hawks, shut up. I'm going to leave. And he even like, can I have my bell, please? And he's, and he's like, and Hawks is like, whoa, 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 calm down, calm down. Look, I'm just here to preserve peace. I just want to chillax, do my thing, sit back, you know, stop the little petty criminals robbing banks, and then go home and go to sleep and wake up the next day and do the same thing all over again. So you find out that Hawks really wants to just not really do much. I'm not to try to say he's lazy, but um, he wants to protect the peace and he kind of wants to keep things. And he even mentions the fact, he's like, look, I'm not no All Might fan or anything. He's like, I'm just trying to do what I can do to help preserve the peace. Um, and then Endeavor's like, look, you, I thought you were here to talk about what you wanted to talk about, these rumors. So they bring up, they go and talk about the rumors, about the Nomu sightings. And essentially, Hawks is like, yeah, there's these been rumors going on from like, you know, housewives in salons, children on the street, all these crazy things talking about what the League of Villains are doing and about the Nomus and stuff like that. Um, and essentially, you know, he, Hawks kind of wants and they're like, look, could you put these rumors to rest, please? Look, so you can have enough confidence that things are all right. And he brings up the fact about that Meta Liberation book. He's like, listen, the reason why that book is becoming a hot seller is because right now at this time, All Might's not here. So there's still a little uneasiness on where the future is going to be headed. And he Hawks brings up the point like, well, when you're in a time of unease, more people try to buy radical things like a Meta Liberation book. Or a war book, essentially, which goes to show uh, I'm shocked that nobody has done that right now, currently. Because if you don't know what's currently going on in the world right now, um, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not gonna bring it up. Um, but then, yeah, so they both look out this window and it kind of pans out to the sky. All of a sudden, we see the Nomu just come on in, just crash in because Hawk is like, get away from here because the waiter is like coming up on them. And all of a sudden, the the Nomu um, shows in his head. He's like, and this is the thing. This, this is another reason why this Nomu is different. And this is why I said this Nomu looks upgraded. Because for one, it still looks like it has the brain. Mm-hmm. But it talks now. Nomu, I repeat. Nomu talks now. Yeah, I don't think it, I don't think it talked before, didn't it? <laughs> no, they didn't talk. They just made little screechy noises or anything or they didn't mm-hmm. respond to anybody this normal straight up talks i be- forgot what he says he's like i forgot what he says he says something about stronger or something like that and yes who is the strongest i think it who says is, who, is- who is the strongest yeah this nomu is different and these nomus um now if you're asking what are these nomu to save you the time of eventually finding out, this Nomu is called a high-end Nomu. Essentially, it's an upgraded Nomu that is much more powerful than the standard typical Nomu you've seen in the past three seasons. And you'll see that next week. And I'll just say this. The current arc, they're dealing with an army one. The army of them. And you're going to see how next week it's a struggle for Endeavor just to beat one. And it's going to be emotional as heck next episode. And the episode ends off with Endeavor using his, I think, his blast burn move. And he's like, I'm the strongest one. I'll show you what it means to be strong or something like that. And that's when the episode ends off. I was like, no! Oh, boy. So next week, the final episode um, of My Hero Academia for season four is ending out on a flame. Literally. Literally. It will be Endeavor versus High End Nomu. And like I said, the High End Nomu, if you were intimidated by the Nomus from the past three seasons, the High End Nomu is going to scare you. And think about this. A stronger Nomu, no All Might. And these, and I, I'm just going to bring up the point. 
these no moon that's supposed to be essentially the thing that rivals all might so you can say the first you, you can say those no moves back then were kind of like test dummies this is advanced and it goes to question how are they making these no moves that's another question how are these no moves still being made are the league of villains doing it or is somebody else doing it? Because All for One can't make those no moves no more. Does it's it another. Have, do you huh? think, it has, think it has anything to do with those drugs that they got from Overhaul? Who knows? Who knows? I can't say anything. I guess, Denzel, your thoughts on the high end no move? <sighs> Endeavor, Endeavor could probably be screwed here. Yes, as well as the other heroes. Shh. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? And this is what I mean by we're in the end game now. See, listen, this is going to lead straight into season five. Things are going to change. Things are going to change. Um, and I guess before I end this video off... um. One, one, first things first, I'm actually pretty shocked that they're doing this fight because this fight literally took up like, I think three or four manga chapters. Um, mm. and, um, I'm actually shocked that they're doing this fight and I'm like, well, if they're going to do this fight, they obviously have to have some of this fight in this episode. No, you only get that one move from Endeavor. And then that's when the episode ends. I'm like, oh, now, people's criticism next week's episode might say, well, next week's episode was kind of rushed. Well, that's, I guess, the creators, I guess that's Toho's, I guess, Essential's fault because maybe they should have did this fight with, like, three episodes left in the season. Um, but, like I said, um, I, and I guess now I can say, well, you get two fights in the second half of the season. Um, so, I guess if the second half of the season wasn't interesting... You get another interesting tidbit. It'll be your last little thing with dealing with, I guess, a little bit of the League of Villains and No Win. Next week's episode is going to be titled His Start. So it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. And next week will be the final episode of Season 4 of My Hero Academia. <sighs> Man, how far we've come. Yes, indeed. Um, and it's crazy because... Season four was supposed to start last year around this time. And that's why they put it on Hades till October, which I'm guessing now My Hero Academia will be coming out in October. Now, I'm guessing that gives them enough time. Like I said, barring any delays because of this coronavirus threat, um, you know, you'll probably see season five, maybe October. I won't talk more about that till next week. But, um, yeah, other than that, me and the Red Wolf are going to get out of here, I guess, before anything. Denzel, what are your thoughts on this episode? Mm, it's interesting, and, I, and I'm and i looking forward to seeing uh, more of the Endeavor's character development. Yes, this is the character development um, Endeavor gets. This is what I was talking about for the majority of times. This is the thing that starts his... This is the thing that starts his character development to becoming the number one hero. Um, so it's going to be inter It's going to be a pretty cool animated fight from this, the next, the post credit or well, the next episode preview scenes, it's looking like it's going to be a pretty entertaining fight. So Endeavor versus High and Nomu. We'll see. We'll see what's going, what it's going to entail. Other than that, um, I'm going to get out of here. This has been Cam for 15. Here's the Red Wolf. Um, if you like this video, leave a like. If there's a comment section you want to put on your thoughts about anything pertaining to this episode, like the high and no mood that I can, I guess, clarify some more, um, that I, if I didn't clarify it enough, um, yeah, leave a comment section. I'll make sure to reply to you because if you're an, especially if you're an anime only. But like I said, we're in the end game now. We're in the end game for My Hero Academia. And I mean not wrapping up to the final arc or anything. I mean just in the end game from things of getting from you thought things in this series got crazy. Things from this point on are going to get hectic. Currently right now what's going on in the manga is hectic. And I'm worrying for a character. 
And when I mean worrying for a character, that means I'm praying that they don't die. Um, oh, too much information. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, also hit that subscribe button, not only to my channel, but the Red Wolf channel. Um, currently, right now, we are doing a One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 gameplay, and you don't want to know. I feel like I should make a video about my stressful time just getting one game. That, 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 do you want this to be on a separate video, or? I feel like I should put this on a separate, that on a separate video, but we kind of explained it in your first episode, so, yeah. Other than that, um, I know Denzel said he will probably post that episode later I, today. I forgot to do it last night, my God. Um, but, yeah, um, go to his channel to see our playthrough, because the game you can play online co-op together, um, of... One Piece Pirate Warriors 4. Now, I won't be showing no gameplay on my side because my setup's kind of wonky, but you'll definitely see gameplay from Denzel's side. Other than that, I'm going to get out of here. I'll catch you guys on the next episode. So, hopefully you guys have a good day. Stay at home. And don't be crazy like me when I was out half the day, afternoon yesterday. Um, you know, be safe. Make sure you wash your hands. Things look things things are sounding like things are gonna get worse, but I promise you guys, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Everything always starts out worse, and it's gonna get bad. It's gonna get better. I promise you that. I guarantee you that. It, if we just abide by the rules, it's going to get better. Listen, I said it many times in past videos. China looks like it's going on for the better. Now, as long as they stop eating crazy stuff, um, okay, we'll be good. But um, look. If you guys have any worries, I can understand your worries, but it's going, yes, it might get extremely worse in April, but, um, you know, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. I can most definitely promise you that. And the one way you can get make it get better is by staying at home. And me and Denzel both can both say that we both agree with that. Yeah, and I like to point out that you used the word better in one sentence so many times. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm going to get out of here. You've stayed here long enough. We're going to get out of here. This is Camry 15. It's a wolf here. And we're signing out. Hopefully you guys have a great day. Peace.